wolves can smell humans and they can also hear the movement of humans from about 30 kilometers ahead. So all these qualities make it very difficult for hunters to catch wolves. But you see, the Eskimo tribe, they have a way of catching wolves effortlessly. And so the world came together and called the Eskimo tribes. Tell us your secret. They said, wolves have an intrinsic appetite for blood. So this is what we do. We look for a very sharp, long knife. Then we soak it inside fresh blood. We bring it out. We sun dry it. We dig the ground and we secure the base of the knife in the ground. Then we go and sleep. Now, the wolves begin to perceive the smell of blood from several kilometers away and it begins to sniff his nose and trace the smell until he finally finds the knife. As the wolves begins to lick the blood, the knife begins to slice his tongue but he becomes so engrossed with the taste of the blood that a time comes when the wolves begin to lick its own blood but he does not feel the pain because the pleasure he's getting from the taste of the blood outweighs the pain he needs to endure to lick the blood. Before the wolves comes to the realization that oh this is my blood I'm licking is dead. It is not the knife that kills the wolf neither is it the Eskimo tribe. What kills the wolf is that innate desire lost craving for blood. Now the Bible says but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now listen to me there is such a thing as own lust. Scripture calls it own lust because you own it and you cannot disown it. It is your second nature. Now one of the biggest error is to behave like angels and deny the own lust. A sister came to me and said, Sir, my fiance is like a papa. And he went for him where I see him. And a sister saw him praying. And after service, the sister came and said, ah, ah, Brother Zacchaeus, you can pray? Please, I need help. My prayer life is dragging. I want you to become my prayer partner. And the brother said, That one is a simple thing. Even me, I have hunger. So, where's the venue? And he said, Anyway, your room is okay. You know, the Bible says, When we want to pray, go into your room and shut the door. And both of them, they locked up themselves inside the room pressing as they were pressing they were pressing something else they pressed into a realm they did not expect to go and they woke up and like, what did we do now it did not happen once they had another prayer meeting and that led to another episode one of the greatest battle you will fight as far as sexual purity is concerned is not against the devil it's against your own lust because see that guy called devil is defeated satan does not want to rule you as long as he can get your own lust to rule you there are things you can control there are things you cannot control god says flee from youthful lust you must learn to flee some of you, you are in a relationship you are sleeping over in your fiance's house all in the name of oh we are getting married you will never be able to overcome lust that way jesus said if your right hand will make you fall, cut it off. Now, Jesus was not saying you should be amputated. Jesus is saying anything that is so dear to you as your right hand, as long as that thing is coming in between you and your purity, let it go. If you are telling God to help you and you cannot submit to the instructions, the principles of God's word, you are not ready. 